This recording is the continuation of a previous recording where I had started talking about the cranial meninges. And so I said, okay, we're going to stop there and I'll do a, a subsequent recording that covers the spinal meninges. So as a reminder again, your meninges are these membranes. And from outermost to innermost, you had the dura mater, you had arachnoid mater, And then you had your innermost is the pia mater. I also had previously mentioned different spaces. And so we had an epidural space, which is above the dura mater. We have a subdural space, which is between the dura mater and the arachnoid mater. Sub means under the dura, epi because it's upon the dura, and then we have a subarachnoid space. We talked about this with the cranial meninges, and with the cranial meninges, when we talked about the spaces, we had said that these first two spaces were potential spaces. Now, when we talk about the spinal meninges, the reason why I did these in different colors is the ones in red are not potential spaces, the subdural space is. So in the, when we look at the spinal cord, there is stuff found within the epidural space. So let's look at a picture showing you the spinal cord and you see a vertebra here. So here's a cervical vertebra and the spinal meninges. So here is the dura mater because it's the outermost. The middle one is arachnoid mater. And the one that's firmly attached to the spinal cord, that is pia mater. Now on the picture, you see where all this fat is, and that all around here, you see it in here, this is representing fat that's found in the epidural space. The epidural space has adipose tissue. It has blood vessels. It's got some loose connective tissue. This is a site where if someone has, they say, oh, I've had an epidural. This is where they inject, say, anesthesia in here. So uh, because of all those large blood vessels in there. Um, that dura matter also helps form what we call something called the coccygeal ligament. Um, the coccygeal ligament uh, helps to kind of pro pro uh, provide um, vertical stability to the spinal cord. Um, so that, that um, the dura matter is um, uh, part of that, or in the spinal cord, helps to form that coccygeal lig ligament. So we got the dura matter. Now that dura mater is not directly attached to vertebra except very uppermost cervical vertebra, but then you have the epidural space, which is underneath the dura mater. There is stuff there. You have the arachnoid matter, and underneath that arachnoid matter, or not underneath, uh, between the arachnoid matter and the dura mater, we have what's referred to as the subdural space, but that is a potential space. But you can have, um, say, when I had mentioned previous recording, an epidural hematoma and a subdural hematoma, you can have them down and associated with the spinal cord too, where you can have accumulation of blood in the epidural space or in the subdural space. But normal conditions that subdural space the, doesn't exist, that pressure from the cerebral spinal fluid keeps the arachnoid matter and the dura matter firmly attached to each other. Now, located beneath the arachnoid matter is the subarachnoid space. So I'm going to write that in here. So subarachnoid space, you can kind of see all this like dark blue in here. That's filled with cerebral spinal fluid. So it's filled with CSF. CFS, or sorry, CSF is also located in this area right here called the central canal. That's continuous up with the fourth ventricle of the brain. And, but we have that subarachnoid space, like up in the brain, is also filled with cerebral spinal fluid. Now the pia mater, which is that innermost part here, 
that helps to form we call denticulate ligaments which you see right there so denticulate ligaments now denticulate ligaments help to um, you know they kind of go from the pia matter out to the dura matter they help prevent lateral movement of the spinal cord it's also a surgical landmark surgeons when they're going in there they know that this structure is located between these two structures here this thing is called the ventral root and this is called the dorsal root you don't need to worry about that right now but when they're in there they know that denticular ligaments are located between those two structures um, on a lab model I'm just going to show you so these in a lab model so you see that it's kind of what you just saw but here you see all the yellow the adipose tissue and here you can see the blood vessels that is the epidural space okay the I'm going to zoom in so you can see a little bit better here I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to highlight in green the dura matter so here's the dura matter right there and it goes all the way around right there so there's the dura matter in red I'm going to do the arachnoid matter so arachnoid matter is this right there and that goes all the way around here that thin line that you see between it right here that technically that one tiny little line would be the subdural space that is really hard to tag during a practical um, or a quiz so I personally will never tag that because it is extremely tiny but so we have dura matter here it's all the way around you have the arachnoid matter there all of this in here that is the subarachnoid space that white that you see that I'm just going to highlight now in black that is the pia mater right there okay so here's the pia mater so that's what you see with a lab model this does not show you denticulate ligaments so I can't show you that um, but I will show you the ventral root and the dorsal root so here is the ventral root there is the dorsal root so the denticulate ligaments would be right in there if they did show up so this will be um, just covering those spinal meninges so with the spinal meninges you still got the dura mater the arachnoid mater the pia mater when we talk about the spaces there's difference there is an epidural space in the spinal cord it is a real space it has adipose tissue it's got blood vessels um, but in the brain it's a potential space subdural space is potential in both the brain and the spinal cord subarachnoid space is a space in both the brain and spinal cord that's filled with cerebral spinal fluid cerebral spinal fluid also is located in this area right here called the central canal okay so that's called the central canal so I'll write it out for you all right so we're gonna leave it right there